So we're not going to win any prizes for having any sort of prototype or fancy slides or anything. So we were literally doing this right up until the time limits. Uh, the scope was massive. How do you eat, eat an elephant one bite at a time? I think it's, it's, the objective was to create a framework. Uh, so a question was asked um, before, the, before we started. 56 people in the room. Who had a, pos had a view on G chat GBT? Yeah, positive, negative, who had a plan for using it in the NHS, and it was quite, quite a low number. So we um, proposed that a theme for the hack could be uh, when people who work within the NHS should have a plan. Uh, and because ChatGPT is embedded in Microsoft products, such as Teams, it's already in the NHS, um, we, we thought we should focus on that. So our team here, I won't read it all out, but it's quite a varied team. It was a unique chance to have a focus group to talk about this. Um, we looked at biases and experiences. Again, I won't go into this in the interest of time, but we, 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 uh, we came to the conclusion that there should be a plan. Uh, what needs to be considered at a plan? We spent about two or three hours actually just brainstorming and all the different aspects of it. And I've summarised them there. So the fact that it is integrated with Microsoft solutions, the impact of prompt engineering, which is a massive subject in, in itself, and I, and I implore you all to go and, and, and investigate that. Privacy, clinical risk, stakeholder engagement, and workforce were the areas that we considered. And we came up with these five pillars of a chat GPT plan in the NHS. Uh, and, and this is based on our group and how we rank them. Uh, we said clinical risk and information governance are the, the top priorities. Clinical risk, because um, even though in chat GPT it's in the acceptable use, it says, do not use for anything to do with you know, you know, diagnosis or clinical you know, aspects. Um, and information governance, because what I found out is if you use ChatGPT, um, even though there's nothing really in any of the documentation I could find, um, when you use ChatGPT, the information you put in is used by ChatGPT and the open eye algorithms to improve the response going forward. So if you put patient identifiable, identifiable identifiable data, PID, easier to say, and clinical information into ChatGPT, it is going out there into the multiverse. Yeah, so that, that was the big wake up call for me. Um, operational use, um, considerations, how, how, does it, how does it affect the workforce and things like that. Um, validation of the technology, how, how much do we know about this technology and its suitability. And then finally, the lowest thing, was the deployment, and the reason for that really is because it's already in the NHS. That's the, probably the scariest thing about it. Um, aspects we looked at with clinical risk, I will fly through these in the interest of time. We looked at information governance there. Uh, these are some of the things that came up in our, in our um, uh, brainstorming workshop session, validation of the technology and the deployment. We then... So just to say, with all of those, we will we, we, we'll try and get these in a way to, to give them because they're probably things that are flying by and all that that uh, you would like to add to. We want this to kind of start a conversation, launch conversations everywhere, so um, we will try and do that. So it would be useful to talk to people about the ways in which we can do that. We've got a lot of time on this, absolutely. Because, no, 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 it's just because it's such a big subject. Uh, uh, oh my God, what have we done? What did we do over, over the, over, following on from this? So uh, we did some prompt testing and, and, and you guys particularly looked at kind of different types of prompts. Just yeah, um, so first off, we need to uh, discuss the, the use cases that we considered to be used with explored diagnostic use with a, a clinician in the loop system. Um, and uh, this personal oh my god moment for me, this was um, number one, that as a trained person you are designing these prompts then for potentially uh, do to learn and be used and replace certain aspects of the workforce um, and in so doing uh, deliver care and in testing these prompts and looking at the chat history we know that sometimes due to the performance of chat GPT uh, the information it gives back the decisions it might suggest uh, are based on information that it forgets about the patient uh, information that has been given earlier in the conversation that is not retained, um, which is risky in and of itself. And sometimes, as you found out, 
Yeah, so I, I kind of experimented with what I thought was a low risk use of like generating new referrals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ourselves and our organisations. It's new for everyone, so we need to understand it. Um, and we, one thing that I think has come out of this is we all start with slightly different assumptions. Um, within this group, we had different knowledge and assumptions about it. So we need to build that shared understanding. And so we really encourage you to go away, explore it, talk to people, um, explore it safely, talk to people in your organisation uh, about it and what this technology that's coming down the track means. Uh, patients might be using it at home. Like they might be putting their symptoms in there. We need, we can't duck the conversation. So we encourage you to do that. And so we'd like to do the final um, at the end. Oh, sorry. Um, who thinks we need a plan for using uh, tech, GPT, and other LLMs in the NHS? And how are they going to be? Okay. I think we've done our. <laughs> well, questions. So you haven't built any software, there's no product, but what you have done is follow up a set of policy, the initial policy questions, which you'll, I think, got quite a, quite a good level of maturity at the time ended up. But the question I've got is to say, as if you had built software, yeah. which is how do you get it deployed? <coughs> so that, that's my question. How do you get this deployed, as if it was a software product? So, so I think, um, uh, for me personally, I think about it as a First, it's a raising awareness within the organisation. Secondly, it's uh, having some clear, some clear policy set from above. So, for me, I work in the software industry, so I will be going to Tech UK, raising this with Tech UK, and help get how how should this be deployed uh, sensibly in the NHS. So, that would be the industry, the software industry side of it. But I think the, uh, the there should be something similar happening at the NHS side. There should be the policy makers should be aware of this. I'm, I'm personally very concerned that ChatGPT is already in the NHS through Microsoft Teams and nobody's really aware of, of the implications of that. So to put that more sadly, crudely, our plan for getting this deployed is you. We've spoken to you today, we've raised a bunch of talking points. Please take these talking points, other talking points that pop into your head, and go and talk to people about it, go and talk to the senior leaders. Um, some of, many people here are senior leaders. Have these conversations, please, please, please. Nobody has all the answers yet. We don't have all the answers yet, but you're our plan. Thank you. Any other questions? Kerry? So you, you, you correctly identified that sometimes when I'm talking about something as a medical device, and you did mention regulators in that, and uh, uh, yeah, if the regulation of AI uh, in general is a, a top topic, and I just wondered whether you'd have any thoughts about uh, where that was going. I get okay, my personal thoughts on this are um, it, it's not a not a medical device, it should not be a medical device, but it is in the NHS. It is. So if, if somebody, there doesn't seem to be any guidelines for usage, if somebody uses a, a chatbot in Teams to, to talk about clinical information, uh, and, and if it's using information and deriving a conclusion from it, that's a medical device. But uh, it just seems to be unregulated, uh, it is, is, is my uh, concern at the moment. So uh, I'm not quite sure how it's going to be regulated, but this is an awareness raising. I, I, I would suspect it is regulated, but the people using it might not realise yes, it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I suspect you're right, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, do, so, so, so what you were referring to about Microsoft Teams is that usually people would say Microsoft Teams should not be used to deliver patient care, or but it might be happening, so therefore some AI may be used that is not being considered as a medical device. That's, I think, what you're yeah. talking about, the that's use of things which are not being designed as medical devices being used in a medical device context. Yes, yeah. But also, not, but also uh, we're not limiting the discussion of... Yeah. 
this to its use as a medical device because it, there are other ways it's going to impact our system which is not not all covered by it being used as a medical device. I can imagine a remote MDT session, um, typing in notes with patient ID, you know, patient identical data in there, asking ChatGPT, please summarise this. That would be a medical device. To me, clearly, yeah. that would be a medical yeah. device. So, summarising MDT records <laughs> is yes, a medical yeah. device. A medical device, yeah. 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 So, folks, jump in. Um, yeah. Two months ago, Michelle Donnellan, when she was Secretary of State, she was on the that, when she was Secretary of State of DCIT, the new department being fed out of DCMS, put a white paper together on regulation, small r, of um, artificial intelligence. This is before ChatGPT gained all the traction it had in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and what she said in that paper was the policy drive of the UK government was absolutely one of promoting innovation from an economic development perspective, rather than look at the downsides through mandating the way in which regulation should work. Now, that was an overarching policy position, which sat above health, education. Um, what's changed since then is the way the EU has come out of it. So he's done increasingly what the discussion is last weekend in the Russian winter as well, G7 is. So I think the answer is absolutely going to be that, and, and, and I sit on the Ofcom board, and, and we were talking about this over the year before we did last week, about the way in which there, there, there's real questions about hard regulation of what AI um, could be, and it's chat GPT that's changed everything. It's changed on a weekly basis. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry, I, I, my point actually was <laughs> 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 that is there any real difference between the overarching way in which you about regulation this is how it sits in the NHS or, or education. So is there anything about the NHS and, and the clinical context which is special in terms of AI? That's the thing why there's a real I think it's the right. sensitivity of the information. So if there's the possibility that at some point in the future uh, an insurance company, an ambulance chaser, who are all the people within this region in this time period who suffer from this condition? And then you get that information out of charge GT because it's been put in there. That's, that's the list. This is a really interesting discussion. If we were having a long conference or something, let's be completely with people.